Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Very happy to be connecting with you once again today. This is Master Paul. And it's the 29th day of January. We have two more days because there's, you know, 31 days in January. And it seems to be very cold in different parts of the world. And that's why I say I'm extremely blessed to be connecting with you from Hawaii, where it's still cold here, believe it or not, but not anything like what you may be experiencing. <clears throat> Except for those in the south part of the world, Australia and whatnot, it's their summertime down there. But uh, I'm very grateful for your presence wherever you're coming in from. And today we're going to be focusing on a subject that came to me today. Uh, it does have uh, aspects of spirituality as well as physics involved in it. And it's understanding the frequencies and dimensions, their interconnectivity, um, how one can impact the other, what the differences are, and what, uh, what the commonalities are amongst them. More importantly, how can understanding frequencies and dimensions impact us at this specific time here on Mother Earth? Because as a human race, we're going through quite a bit right now. And uh, it's good to have these informations and to clear up some, some um, I wouldn't say misconceptions, but I would say lack of understandings. It's important to have more clarity on certain areas. <clears throat> and so that's a, an aspect of what we're going to be talking about today. And so certainly I am not a guru on the end all and be all on this. You'll find at least 100 people that will have a massive disagreement with what I say and another 100 that says, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a subject matter that there will always be experts on and those experts could be full of it. And then there's people that don't really know a lot about it but could be right on target. Uh, that's the nature of these subjects. So I will share with you my understanding. Uh, you can accept it or not, uh, or aspects of it. That part will be completely up to you. <clears throat> but we'll be talking about uh, frequencies and dimensions and how it's impacting us at this time of Mother Earth. So that's what the subject matter is today. Um, feel free to share. Let other people know about this live stream. Let me go ahead and connect with who is joining us today. Let's see. Welcome, Heather. Welcome, Carol. Aloha, Bruce. Uh, welcome also to Samba. Aloha to um, Breitstadt. Anton. Aloha to Diana. Great to see you. Leona. Welcome, Mike Capo. Welcome also Bruce Martin and uh, Scott. Great to see you all here. <coughs> Kristen Rojas. Thank you for your service, Kristen. Uh, welcome, Annie Savage. Welcome also Joy Weber and Carol Frederico. Janice Crosby, welcome. Uh, let's see, am I missing anybody? Shelly, welcome Shelly. Aloha to Tone, welcome Elder Pamela. And Rosetta, welcome Trina. Aloha Susan Birchmore. <clears throat> I think I've got most people acknowledged at this point. I might be missing one or two. Welcome Don Robinson. Thank you all for your presence. So um, the last couple days I've been going through some energetic adjustments. And uh, this is not a new thing necessarily. I've witnessed it a couple of times. There's typically different reasons for it, and I'll share with you some of them that's been happening for me, uh, some interesting experiences I've been having. <clears throat> and then I'll share with you uh, a collective wisdom that I've gained in my half a century or so on this planet. Uh, but uh, we'll just chat just a little bit longer as we wait for Facebook to grab a few more souls. As always, we connect to the Divine Tao Source. We invite their presence, <clears throat> as they always have some wonderful things to share. And then we'll go ahead and move forward with today's live stream. One of the things that tends to impact uh, humanity as a whole is um, our collective thinking on something whether it's collectively positive or collectively negative, it impacts all of us. Um, if it's divisive, meaning the information uh, is separative in nature, um, then it also impacts us all negatively. <clears throat> um, and that's what's happening in quite a few areas of the world. There is a great deal of tug-of-war going on between the dark and the light side. Uh, it shows up in a lot of different ways. Uh, the, some people on the dark side will say that the light side is dark and vice versa. And so it's very hard to differentiate what is correct and what is not correct. Uh, so in 
the spiritual journey, which we are all on, um, the the line that you want to walk is actually the line down the middle where you don't necessarily get swayed in any particular direction. Um, where you watch and you're able to witness the the segregation and the divisiveness of um, those that want to uh, control our energies. <clears throat> we are in a place in time here on Mother Earth where there's a, a lot going on and uh, I'll go into more on that in detail. I gotta stop myself now and kind of go ahead and prepare the energy. Um, so welcome also to um, Plat Platernal Verhaven Van cannot pronounce the rest of your name, forgive me. Welcome Paola, Sharon Dodd, Aloha, welcome Janelle. Uh, if I missed your name, forgive me, thank you for your presence. And welcome also Kathy Berger. So I will call forth the beings of light, ask them to become present with us, and um, you may choose to connect as well. Dear the Divine, our beloved Creator, all layers of the Divine Tao Source, by whatever name you go by, whatever belief system, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We invite your presence at this time. We invite the soul of all beings of light, serving the plan of the light side in all ranges, all dimensions. We are very grateful for your presence, your blessings, your enlightenment. We ask your presence at this time. Dear the soul of all of those heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, on our own soul, we love you, honor you, respect you. We ask for your presence at this time. As I share this subject matter today, I ask for your guidance to deliver the information that will serve the most souls, create the least resistance and the greatest value for all those that are listening. Very grateful. Thank you. We ask the song of love, peace, and harmony and the frequencies associated with the song of love, peace, and harmony to please uh, bless each and every one of us as I chant this mantra and uh, assist in creating a beautiful field of love so that whatever is shared today can be received with the greatest open heart thank you thank you thank you so for those that are new this is a mantra it has been chanted around the world in six continents each and every day for many many years now it's uh, been actually changed into over 40 languages and you will hear today soul soul song soul language Mandarin Chinese and English and if you're new to this just receive the blessing uh, and this will help align our hearts and souls let us begin Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la ha li lu la Lu la ha li lu la Wo ai wo xian er ling, wo ai zhan man li, ong ling rong er mu shi xiong, xiong ai ping on he xie, xiong ai ping on he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that just came in, they see this man, maybe they've never seen before, chanting a song maybe they've never heard before. What does it have to do with understanding frequencies and dimensions? Well, the song, all songs carry frequencies, some healing, some not so much. It's a representative example. <clears throat> so welcome also um, to Ashley. Welcome Robin Toth. Welcome Carrie. Aloha Sandra Pritchard. Uh, welcome Shelley. Aloha Tracy, Erica. Welcome Amy Hudrick. Uh, and uh, any other souls? That I may have missed thank you for your presence and welcome <clears throat> so where to begin uh, the subject matter goes very wide and very very deep we are human beings and yet we are souls our souls are not restricted by time and space and yet we as a human being are 
What does that mean, that a soul is not restricted by time and space? It means that souls can be in many places all at once because there is no such thing as time or space. What's a truth? What's a representative example of that? On this live stream, this is going on two and a half years, close to three years now, uh, I have offered soul healing in which I'll choose one or two people, sometimes all of you, uh, and I will do what's called a soul healing blessing. Uh, I'm here in Hawaii, 2,000 miles away from the nearest slice of land, and yet instantly people feel results. How do you explain that? Because from the perspective of soul, there is no time, there is no space. The healing blessing that is offered is not offered to you physically. It's offered to the sole of your back if you requested back pain, or the sole of your neck if you requested for neck pain. And yet, instantly you feel better. How do you explain that? Um, it has to do with frequencies. It has to do with understanding the nature of soul, the nature of our soul in relationship to all time and space. Now, as stated, and I will restate now, uh, this is just my collective understanding. It's not the end-all be-all, and I'm certainly no guru in a lot of what will be said here. There will be more that have a lot more knowledge and information than I have, and those that have a lot less. There will be those that have a lot more knowledge and information, and their information could be very, very wrong. It could also be very right. There could be those that have a lot less information, but they're very connected, and their information could be very accurate. So the first piece of information to understand is <laughs> nobody knows it all. <clears throat> but take what feels accurate, because if it feels accurate, it's probably resonating at a soul level, which means there's probably accuracy associated with it. And if it can assist you with moving forward on your soul journey, then that's a good thing. Okay? I see a question. Tracy says, uh, our soul as in the same as our spirit. Yes. Soul, spirit, same word, um, different terminology. So... Dimensions and frequencies. What are the differences and what are the commonalities? Well, one of the things I've come to accept as a truth in my world, certainly you don't have to agree, is that all space, all time is now. Because the future has not happened yet, right? And the past has happened. We recognize that. But what we do now can literally impact the past. What we do now what we do now impacts our future, and because it's impacting our future, it could positively impact the past. Isn't that interesting? Like if, if I led you through one of the wisdom practices that Master Shah teaches us on forgiveness, many people have witnessed that by doing deep forgiveness practice, which is a now and future paced uh, orientation, it impacts the past. So the first understanding of frequencies and dimensions that you may choose to accept as a truth is that Past, present, and future are all happening now. So that's a tough one to wrap the brain around, but let's work with it a little bit. If that's the truth, then what are dimensions? Dimensions, according to everything I've gathered so far, <clears throat> are levels of vibrational frequency. It's different than, let's say, a frequency that a cell phone puts out. It's different than the frequency you and I put out. Our cells operate at a very specific frequency. And if you're next to a Wi-Fi tower or a cell phone tower, they negatively impact our cellular vibrational frequency. Whereas our soul operates on an entirely different frequency than the cell phone tower. So there's different parts of us that are impacted by frequencies. And what are dimensions? Many different uh, people would offer what their description of a dimension is. I will share with you a little bit of an understanding uh, of what I've come to understand, and that is that uh, dimensions are levels of source creation from where we're at to original source creation. And it's my understanding that, again, you don't, may or may not agree with, that there are unlimited levels. <laughs> we don't just stop at the 7th, 8th, ninth, or 10th level and we're done. That it just goes, 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 goes until ultimate creator. And no one quite knows where that end point is. So uh, angels, let's talk about them as an example. 
They are a soul. They operate at, at a dimensional level or a frequency that most of us are unable to see. Uh, because you're a spiritual being, you're watching this, uh, probably 20-30% of you have the ability to see uh, colors, images, or direct third eye images where you're receiving messages from the soul world. <clears throat> Whereas the other 70% may not have that ability. Uh, why? Why would that occur? It has to do with our, our literally our physical presence versus our soul level presence. So having, uh, in, in this topic we'll, we'll touch on maybe some of you may or may not agree, but incarnation, um, I come from the belief system that we live more than once, you may or may not accept that. Uh, but based on that understanding that we live more than once, our soul lives forever, we incarnate in this third dimensional experience and we experience through our five senses. Well, those five senses are somewhat limiting. They don't allow us, for example, to see angels. They don't allow us to see what God might look like or what, um, what a, a spirit or heaven's dragon might look like. And yet when you talk to those that have advanced uh, third eye or spiritual eyes, they can see many of these things. How come they can and we cannot? Are they special? Uh, the answer is no. No, they're not any more special than you or me. <clears throat> the reasons why is because the, a, a piece of apparatus within their soul, within their third dimensional vessel, uh, has been adjusted to where it can see frequencies higher than the five senses that you and I are accustomed to working with. And so that being a truth, not an, uh, it's you know, something that everyone, every human being can be trained to pop open their third eye. There are literally ways to accomplish this. So it's not that it's, they're special. They have just attuned certain aspects of their physical vessel to, to experience higher frequencies. So that being a truth and past, present, and future being literally all around us at all times, what then is a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimension? And who is in those third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimensions and higher? Well, right now, where I sit, right now, exactly where you're sitting, watching this, standing, wherever you're at, literally all around you is the fourth dimension. It is literally all around you. So is the fifth, sixth, seventh, and higher dimensions. They are literally all around you. So are the lower dimensions. How come you can't see them? How come you cannot experience them? It has to do with the adjustment of the human being's frequency. Because we live in a third dimension, but our frequency range of comprehension is limited. I'll give you an example. This little guy right here, it's called Eye Balance Spray. I acquired this uh, years ago. And on the bottom here, you see it says Field Organizer. And I don't use this very often. I just decided to use it today, just following guidance. It says Field Organizer. The, the gentleman that created this shared, he said, I said, what does it do? He says, it balances your left and right hemispheres. I says, well, what does that do if your left and right hemispheres are balanced? <clears throat> he says, well, to give you an idea, the most advanced athletes on the planet, they have discovered when they put them in laboratory conditions at the universities, they put their little probes on their heads and they're operating at peak efficiency, you know, doing their running or breathing or meditating or whatever, that their left and right hemispheres are aligned and that the gap between their hemispheres is smooth and running, not more left, not more right, balanced. So the most advanced uh, souls have balanced hemispheres. That's what he explained. And I says, well, how is it this little spray does it? Is, it? is it oils or what is it? I says, no, it has to do with a frequency that I put into the liquid. So he runs a liquid through a machine that is tuned to a very specific frequency, just like your cell phones operate in a frequency range. A microwave oven operates in a frequency range. Everything has a frequency range. And he was, uh, he, he was given the frequency range that creates balance in the human brain. Isn't that interesting? That's one example. Um, I have something else here that can impact frequencies. This little dude right here, a little bit of rock, okay? Let's say, you know, rocks and minerals can impact frequencies. Uh, most of us know this, you know, some of us are very adept with crystals. How can they do that? How can they impact frequencies? 
because they can capture frequencies from higher and lower dimensions. They are a facilitator of higher and lower dimensional uh, frequencies that are always all around us 100% of the time. They're never not around us. That's the first thing you got to grasp. Literally, at all times, we are being surrounded by higher and lower frequencies. At all times. The key is to open our blockages, the spiritual blockages, the Shen Qi Jing blockages, uh, allowing these other frequencies to be observed by other senses that are latent. <clears throat> What's an example of a latent sense? Give me a moment to clear my throat. Uh, you know, psychic, third eye abilities, the ability to receive messages from the soul world, etc. Uh, the ability to, to move objects with your mind. Okay, these are things, what will be able to walk on water? You know, all of these things are considered, you know, impossible. Well, they're not to the person that is not limited by the monkey mind of the third dimension. Um, in other words, these are all latent abilities that every human being can eventually accomplish once they release the various blockages and mindsets that inhibit them from understanding these. So this particular guy right here, this is called Shungite. I've been doing some research on it. I'm not going to try to sell you on it. I don't, you know, I'm still researching it myself. But I'll tell you a little bit about it in relationship to this subject matter today. Probably 30, 40% of you have heard of it. The others that haven't, do, do your own research. Um, what I've discovered is that it, um, it, in the right conditions, can literally attenuate, which is not the same as offset. Um, there are things out there that uh, uh, cell phone frequencies we know are horrible for us. 4G, 5G, it kills things. Don't, don't kid yourself. It kills things. If anybody tells you otherwise, they're just full of it. Okay, It's not good for the human body. It's not good for any of us. Um, do your homework. But anyway, we know it's not good for us, and we're adaptive, so we survive around it, but it causes our bodies to dilapidate and become um, not aligned to higher frequencies that can serve our soul journey. Okay, Understand clearly that uh, you know having, having your cell phone on, your TVs, or electric power in the house, it does not positively benefit your soul journey. It does not positively benefit your ability to access higher dimensional frequencies simply because uh, uh, as a person becomes a light body, like uh, our beloved Jesus, our beloved Mother Mary, our beloved Buddha, our beloved Krishna, these are all light beings. Uh, they didn't grow up in a time when there were cell phones and things contributing to their cellular structure uh, dilapidating. The cellular structure, in order to become a light being, has to become light. If you just apply common sense, we have to become light beings to become a light being. And that means literally physically becoming a light being. There are many monks that sit on a mountaintop and meditate for 60 years to become a light being and so forth. And this is aligning their cellular structure to the beings of light all around them uh, 360 days of the year. And so... Um, as, an, uh, as a person that becomes conscious of frequencies, becomes conscious of dimensions, we have to be uh, uh, self-responsible for disallowing inharmonious frequencies from impacting us at the cellular level. And we can do that with things like the Shungite or crystals or whatever it may be. These things can bring positive frequencies to us. Uh, and assist us to opening to other dimensions, okay? Because the dimensions are all around us. Uh, heaven is always talking to us. God is always talking to you. Uh, your angels are always talking to you. Your heaven's team is always talking to you. They're literally always whispering in your ear. They are, they'll drop books on your head. They will bring you words in a song. They will, the person on the street will say something to you that triggers that message you need to hear. Heaven is always talking to you. What's another way of saying that? You're always surrounded by third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, higher dimensions. Always, always, always. But if we're unable to receive their messages, why? Because we are vibrational beings. And the ability to elevate our vibration is dependent on multiple things. So if you looked at Shungite as an example, uh, you place it on your um, Wi-Fi and get things to place it on your phone, whatever. <clears throat> um, and what does it do? 
it when it receives a, a signal uh, it has a higher frequency um, not higher meaning higher on the scale a higher positive energetic frequency that is far more in alignment with the human's positive energy structure and accordingly it attenuates it meaning it alters it not too many uh, product out there can alter most of them can simply override and push it away that's the unique thing about this it alters it so do your own homework so that's another example so what's another example of something that can um, positively impact our frequency and why again I'm gonna repeat it why do we want to positively alter our frequency <clears throat> we want to positively alter it so that we can align to the higher dimensions that are always in all ways surrounding us literally we are being surrounded but we cannot see touch feel connect to those higher dimensions receive those messages unless we adjust our personal frequencies so we can increase our food uh, quality we can remove the chemical toxicities that we ingest with our foods um, I, I, I you know this uh, if you do your homework on this on this particular gemstone this um, uh, what's it called again uh, shungite um, I just acquired it a few days ago I'm still experimenting with it like I said do your homework don't believe me do your own homework okay uh, but based on the research I've done I think it's very valuable to place around water and so <clears throat> these are uh, things to purify the impurities in water uh, we are made up of 70 80 percent water our cells function in water we are water beings and so uh, if you've watched the um, the dr. Emoto uh, uh, images where he's frozen water that has been subjected to energetic uh, impulses impulses of, of the word love impulses of the word hate impulses of music and so forth you can see very clearly that water is impacted by negative or positive frequencies it's it's kind of scientific no-brainer stuff right and so if it impacts water which we only think of as outside of us then what is uh, these negative frequencies and energies doing to impact the water inside of us right so what can we do to elevate our frequency change our food change our food intake change our water and the water intake bring positive frequencies into those subject matters this then allows us to uh, uh, attune and connect to the higher dimensions around us get it <coughs> uh, I see Sue says what about walking perfect walking allows our feet to connect to Mother Earth Mother Earth is four billion years old do you think that's accidental we live a hundred years and die live a hundred years and die live a hundred years and die we haven't learned that much Mother Earth's frequency is a far higher dimensional frequency than uh, than uh, uh, humanity and heavens is far higher than Mother Earth so when you look at dimensional frequencies there are frequencies that go higher and higher and higher some of them in the physical like Mother Earth but she's lived forever that means her knowledge her wisdom and her energetic structure is far more attuned than ours and if you think about it our body is very connected to Mother Earth she feeds us she nourishes us she gives us air she gives us water and she gives us food so yes of course walking uh, uh, walking on the, the beach or breathing in the negative ions after a rain all of these are going to positively benefit our energetic structure uh, energy healing is the healing of the future it's, it's just like it's a you know whoever doesn't say that or whoever doesn't believe it hasn't done enough homework because we are energy beings we are we are made up of energy and matter and we uh, are returning to light what is light light is energy energy is light we're returning to the oneness from which we came so of course that's where all the the healing is going and so as we uh, make adjustments we can very positively impact our frequency which positively impacts our ability to experience other dimensions now some people who have come into this this uh, planetary experience in this last 100 years are way ahead we're way ahead of me way ahead of the curve they're way ahead of everything I'm saying they're already operating in, in a higher dimension they're looking at everybody in this third dimension going why are you guys so behind there are some people that are looked upon as crazy they're just you know people look at them there say they're out there 
but it's possible that literally they're seeing and operating in a dimension that we can't understand and so we judge them as crazy but it's possible they're operating literally in another dimension because of, of, of their particular uh, energetic makeup <clears throat> so it's important to understand that everyone is at a different stage of their awakening of their spiritual body what is spiritual enlightenment it is literally awakening to that which is all around us at all times and becoming more and more of that purity so what's another way to adjust our frequency and thereby experience higher dimensions and why do we want to experience higher dimensions who resides in the higher dimensions <clears throat> well historically speaking and based on everything we've validated as truth in our worlds all the beings of light live in the higher frequencies all the angels archangels all of the uh, uh, ascended masters and so forth of course we would want to hang out with them who wouldn't want to hang out with them right we can do that now in this time it has been stated by great masters that there were times before 30 40 thousand years ago possibly earlier that as a commonplace experience people were walking around talking to all kind beings of light it was very easy their 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 spiritual channels were wide open they didn't even need to open their mouth they just conversed at this level and they could see everything it was commonplace it wasn't something where we have to bite tooth and nail just to be able to open our third eye okay so that being a possible truth from the past certainly we're heading that way as a future how can we get there sooner better faster well here's another way this is a Tao oneness calligraphy card okay Tao oneness calligraphy card if you hold the Bible in your hand can it raise your frequency chances are the answer is yes because it carries with it great love and great light <clears throat> if you hold this in your hand can it raise your frequency the answer is absolutely it just depends on how much you uh, comprehend it it will raise your frequency regardless but if you have a comprehension then it will bring you that much more value how is that possible that uh, a card with with some some strange writing on it can do this for you this one translates to da he she da he she or excuse me da fu wu uh, that translates to the the greatest service this one da chen bei the greatest humility this one da i the greatest love okay that's nice it so, carries a beautiful message the greatest love the greatest humility but what does that mean the wisdom is that if power can be put to example in shungite our power can be distributed through a machine and change our frequencies then why couldn't power be put into objects or things or pieces of paper well the answer is it can be how does it get there it gets there through beings of light Jesus came Buddha came they left great wisdom that wisdom was transferred to paper when people read that paper they receive the light and the wisdom thereby elevating their frequencies thereby aligning to higher dimensions the same thing happens with something like this master Shah my spiritual teacher has received extraordinary healing transmissions and abilities he has uh, demonstrated that literally for the last 20 years doing miracle healings on millions of people just you know and he takes no credit for it he doesn't he ne never takes credit for it always gives credit to the source because he knows he's not doing it he teaches those who he's transferred those healing abilities onto to remain extremely humble never take credit but he recognizes that he doesn't want to be here forever he doesn't want to be that bored you know how long to live here forever very boring he wants to transfer the power to others so that they can elevate their frequencies and move and elevate all of humanity all the ships in the harbor rise at the same time right when the tide comes in so he has transferred heavenly frequencies higher dimensional frequencies into these pieces of paper into these love art calligraphies and how do you know if it works well you got to try it right that's the only way to do it how do you know if shungite works how do you know if uh, you can adjust water by 
by putting love around the water. You got to try it. The only way you'll know is if you actually try it. And so uh, these kinds of calligraphies have been available for seven to ten years. They're in his books. You can access them complimentary. And so what he suggests to do is to connect to them at the level of soul. Since everything has a purpose as part of all universal creation, you ask the soul of the frequencies, positive energies, and blessings placed within from the heavenly high Shen Shi Jing placed into this third dimensional experience. And you ask those high frequencies to adjust our lower frequencies so that we can move higher in the dimensional planes. Very simple common sense practice only requires the actual doing of it. When you actually trace these, how do you trace? You put your fingers together and you follow the lines exactly as you see them. And I'm not going to hold this up for you to do it. I'm just using it as a representative example of the differences between frequencies and dimensions and how one can positively or negatively impact you as a human being and your ability to elevate yourself in this journey. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand here today. There are so many ways in which we can accomplish this. What about meditation? <coughs> Something I'm not very good at and don't do a lot of. I readily admit that it's a huge fault and most of it's because my left brain is just active, right? I'm just a very active mental person. It's a big problem. I need to uh, do more right brain stuff. Some of you are very right brain, very creative, just do art. You don't even contemplate logically. It's just all about following your guidance. God bless you. I wish I had more of your skill set. I have mine, you have yours. So we all have our uh, values and limitations. But in terms of uh, <clears throat> the practical application of uh, these things, meditation assists everyone. Why? Well, what's the baseline wisdom here? We are always surrounded by third, fourth, fifth, higher dimensions, all times, right? We're always surrounded by it. How then can we align to it? How then can we receive their wisdoms, their guidance? We must stop long enough to receive it. We must sit down and place ourselves in a field of love and light which then allows those that are all around us to enter our field of love and light and elevate it. How do they do that? Well, one of the ways, and I suggest you do this, you, you, you know, it's up to you, but, you know, get these, get these calligraphy cards. You can get 10 of them. They're $50 each. Uh, that might sound like a lot if you don't understand the value of them, but there will be at least four or five people that will comment today on, on, you know, uh, the, the value of them. And they're commenting because of their own positive experience. Uh, they spent the money and they've had the results. <clears throat> it's just an example. You can get them anywhere. Any of the centers, any of the master teachers can access them for you. I can get them for you. I'm not doing this to make any money. I'm doing it to tell you it's one way in which you can do this. You can go find Shungite uh, on your own. Go to Amazon. Um, you can do your own meditations on your own. <clears throat> but as you, as an example, get these cards or go get 10 books go get 10 bibles if you are all about jesus and the bible and you're just opening up to these possibilities and you're not really open to any other teachings god bless you that's exactly where you're at in your soul journey go get 10 bibles and put them in a circle around you i promise you it will help your frequency uh if you're on a on a bit more uh, a different path where you want to experiment with something different get 10 of these cards put them in a circle around you <clears throat> go get 10 crystals put them in a circle around you why because it alters and elevates your frequency it puts a field around you where all things negative around you cannot impact you negatively I want to state something very clearly I'm not gonna mince these words there is a battle happening on mother earth and it's a dark side light side battle there are those that do not want you to become an enlightened being. There are those that do not want you to elevate. There are those that live off of negative frequencies. 
That's just the way it is. It's always been that way since all time began. And it's your job as an awakening being to be responsible for your own well-being. You can do that by surrounding yourself with positive energy things. These are positive energy examples, okay? Go buy 10 of Master Shah books if you believe in Master Shah. Go buy 10 of the Quran books if you believe in the Quran. It doesn't matter. If you have a faith and positive belief in it, it will serve you. Put it in a circle around you before you meditate. Uh, alter the frequency with positive music. I chanted love, peace, and harmony. Uh, I highly recommend it. It carries extraordinarily high frequencies, which brings extraordinarily high dimensional beings to serve you. <clears throat> Crystals. I don't know enough about them to offer any suggestions on them. Go find the crystal guru. They know a lot more than I do. I just know that they uh, encapsulate, in most cases, positive energies. And that's not a bad thing, okay? But when you put a field like this around you, you're bringing a protective mechanism, first of all, which allows you, when you go into a meditative state, to be more easily uh, connected to by the beings of light that are constantly surrounding you. So these beings of light are always there to serve you. Your soul wants to connect with you. Your heaven's team wants to connect with you. All the beings of light wish so much to connect with you. And all you need to do is give them a chance by being self-responsible in your diet, being self-responsible by not bringing pollutants into your cellular structure, being self-responsible by not allowing negative uh Thoughts, negative words through the form of news and all those negative, violent, very violent things on the on the TVs. You know, I've I, I still occasionally watch um, uh, action-packed movies. You know, uh, and there's violence in those. Uh, but I've just I've gone away from all those things where there's any bloodshed. It just yeah, it's just disgusting, and it harms our frequency. Okay, um, the news, right? All the separation. Uh, you can say it's this president or it's that group or it's this country or it's that person. Trust me, it's not one person. It's the darkness specifically creating separation. They'll do it any way they can because togetherness creates oneness. Togetherness creates love and light and higher frequencies. So it's never, never, never them or them or them. If you're stuck in this them, them, them world, stop it move towards a light being perspective realize that the darkness that has been running the planet for quite a while has an agenda and it's to keep us pushed down so we must bring love love music love art love a uh, field into our environment we can do this by changing our food by changing our water by bringing uh, love circles around us by bringing uh, anything into our environment that elevates our frequency and stops anything that is trying to harm our uh, environment so this is understanding i hope that you can um, start to get how the difference in frequencies and dimensions are interrelated and what you can do to positively or negatively impact your your, your personal uh, frequency and how that can allow you to access higher dimensions. Now, I'm a, a master teacher who studied under Master Shah. I will tell you straightforward, this is one of the most advanced teachers on the planet. Um, as with all great beings, you will find huge positive things said about this beautiful soul. You will also find negative things said about this beautiful soul. Guess who says the negative things? Those who have an agenda, those who do not have enough uh, awakening to understand what a light beings purpose and value is so do your own homework don't listen to me pick up a book pick up some of the the music that this master has put out it's very light field uh, you can purchase these calligraphies and, and and trace them on a daily basis to bring more light to you um, this particular master has transmitted healing power to literally 10,000 or more people as one of the master teachers, I have received extraordinary healing abilities and have witnessed um, many, many amazing uh, people's return to health. Uh, again, I take no credit. I'm not doing it. 
he takes no credit he's not doing it but the source the creator uh, brings very high level beings to the planet to serve humanity so that we can all rise with the tide as the tide comes in so uh, be aware do not get stuck in the drama of life do not get stuck in it. Do not get stuck in what other people say about you. Do not get stuck in the drama of relationship. Do not get stuck in the drama of finances. One of the things I said to a student just a little while ago, it was a message from <clears throat> her heavens team. And I, it wasn't my own words. It was a message. I just spoke the words. And the nutshell of it was, when you love, and that's all you do, you just give loving words. You just keep giving love. No matter what comes at you from any direction, then it's impossible for you to find yourself in a place where you are harmed by anything anyone says. It's impossible to find yourself in a place where you are brought down by your negative conditions, whether it be finances, relationship, or whatever it is. Because when you give love, you are being a vessel of what, created you you when you give love it is a law universal law that automatically you receive a hundredfold of what you give that's not just cute words in, a, in the Bible that's a truth so just give love as much as you can and whatever problems you're going through will start to self resolve just keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it obviously this will raise your frequency because love is the highest frequency love does melt all blockages which is the one sentence secret my teacher has left with humanity and I leave it with you as I complete today's wisdom and teachings this entire teachings was in flow it was not something I planned how to say it or what to say uh, this is uh, an aspect of being in alignment this is the kind of wisdom you would receive on your own if you started applying some of these wisdoms going into deeper meditations and so forth it's certainly not anything I can take credit for it's something that heaven has brought to me little by little by little and uh, if you ask heaven to bring you wisdoms to elevate your frequencies and to move you into higher dimensions heaven will bring these things to you okay just pay attention to them and do the necessary steps to um, release those blockages. I love you all. I am so very grateful for this opportunity to serve you in this way. If you are interested in receiving uh, personal blessings, uh, where I use very high frequency um, transmissions I receive to move you through some, you know, blockages in your world that you're having difficulty getting through on your own, I'm happy to serve you. <clears throat> One final note. I, uh, this is the last week anybody can register for my Open Spiritual Channels course. Uh, you have to register before Sunday, okay? I've already taught the first two weeks. Everything is recorded, so you can catch up. But I'm about ready to step into some advanced version of opening your spiritual channels. And so if you're interested in that, um, follow the links. Uh, look where Kristen Rojas will post. Go to my website, asoulhealer.com. It's right there under the red tab. And uh, you can register this week, okay? So love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you Thursday, three hours earlier than this, this one started, and I will serve you more then. Bye-bye, everybody.